Hey guys, fishing and stuff. Today, we got more awesome fishing hats. Can you believe it? Me neither. So let's quit wasting time and let's get right into these awesome fishing hacks. Fishing hack number one. So if you ever went to the lake and you getting ready to fish and you like, let's do this. I know you struggle and the struggle is real. I'm just saying. So I got to thinking about one of the hacks I had on another video where I took the two magnetic strips from Harbor Freight and I basically showed how you could install them in your compartment in your bass boat or something to put lures in. Well I kind of got this idea from that. I bought this magnetic tape. It's one inch wide by 10 feet long. That's pretty dang long right there. Next we're going to take a Plano box. This one is slightly used. It ain't new. So we're going to take alcohol and I'm gonna clean this Plano box real good. Just make sure you get anything out of this box that could prevent this tape from sticking. Okay, so next we're gonna take our magnetic tape and we're gonna cut us off some pieces. I'm gonna do mine where the pieces go all the way across my Plano box. And you might wanna use these dividers, cut individual slots in one. Or if your box is made that way, just cut it into pieces that'll fit. But I think if it's gonna work, it's gonna work. And I'm gonna go straight across on every section and not use the dividers. All of us don't have a bass boat that goes 80 miles an hour. I'm just saying. Okay, now I got my magnet strip stuck in this thing. I'm gonna throw some lures in here and see if it works. So I flop this box around a good bit and they don't really move, they kind of hold on. But I will tell you, if you have bigger, heavier baits, they're going to move more because there just ain't enough there to hold all that weight. But the smaller baits held on really good. And the first time I tried it, I had a few baits jumping all over the place. Then I realized that I had several baits that have aluminum hooks on them. <laughs> That's what you get for buying cheap baits. So if you got aluminum hooks, it's ain't going to work. But like I said, it works for these smaller baits. Just didn't work as good for the big baits. So if I was you, I'd just keep my big baits separated. This is a cool idea, but it's nowhere near as strong as the ones I did on the other video. Fishing hack number two. Now this next hack, I got the idea from one of my subscribers. And it wasn't a bad idea. This is one of the magnetic bars that I used on another hack video that I talked about earlier. And I put it in a compartment to throw hooks and lures and things like that on. I buy these stainless steel carriage bolts like this one. And I grind down the sides and I make my own T-bolt side of them. It's just a lot cheaper, that's all. But you can buy T-bolts online and they have all different kinds of them. If you don't want to make your own, just buy you something. And every single rod holder on my boat, I actually made the T-bolts myself for them. But you can take these T-bolts and this magnet strip. Me, I'm going to have to drill out this hole just a little bit because my T-bolts just a tad too big for it. But after I opened it up, I found a place on my boat where the track system is that I don't have anything installed. And you can install one of these magnets on it. But now you got this cool magnet strip installed on your boat and it don't look bad at all. And actually I put two thin washers and a nut under it to raise it up, you know, so you don't damage your paint job or whatever. But this magnet strip's pretty cool. And you bass fishermen and crab fishermen are always in a hurry and you got a bait and you take it off and you want to throw a nut on don't have time to go get in your tackle box or whatever you just throw it on here and it'll stay on there look at that this thing is pretty cool look at that Zzz. that's pretty awesome right there and it stays on good but that's just an idea that might make things simpler while you're fishing that's all i'm saying Fishing hack number three. This right here is a 16 ounce jig head. And one of my subscribers that's on my Facebook page gave me a really good idea. He took a round jig head and he made a peel head out of it. What a peel head is, I think, y'all correct me if I'm wrong, but a peel head to me looks like a baby moon eye. And it's basically where you got the same amount of weight, but it's flattened out, but it's still 16th of an ounce. So I decided to try what he did. I'm sure there's a way you can mash these flat, but I'm just gonna take a big old ball peen hammer and try to mash one flat, see how it turns out. That actually worked pretty good. You can see how flat it is now. 
and you can see that it's actually bigger. So now all you gotta do is put some eyeballs on this thing and you got yourself a peel head jig. That's actually kind of cool. Hack number four. Okay, so this next hack is about drill bits. And actually, you don't need a bunch of drill bits. You only need one, unless you want different sizes like me. These drill bits right here are made to make wooden beads with. You've probably seen wooden beads in the craft section of every store. Like a bunch of fishermen are gonna be shopping in the craft section. Well, if you watch my channel, you probably do. But these are for people that want to make their own wooden beads. But you know, a wooden bead is pretty much the same thing as a wooden float, technically. The top part of this drill bit cuts the bead out itself. The center part puts the hole in the bead, but it also serves a more important purpose, and that's to keep it straight. Because you have to drill it from one side, then you flip it over, put the little drill bit back through the hole, and drill it from the other side until the bead pops out, or in our case, a float. Now, if you want cleaner beads or floats, you probably want to use a drill press with very little run out. But you can also do this with a hand drill. Just try to keep it straight as you go through. And if you did this with balsa wood, you could make some awesome floats because balsa wood is the closest thing to styrofoam, but it's still wood. I made a little crappy float. That's awesome. That's why I bought the whole kit because I can make any different size bead or float that I want to. Just remember, if you're working with balsa wood though, you're gonna have to seal this stuff with paint or with epoxy or something because it'll soak up the water and it'll lose its buoyancy. Now this is a wooden dowel that I had laying around, but you know what? You can also buy balsa wood dowels offline. And if you took a dowel and you cut it down just a little bit, then you take your drill bit. You drill through one side, drill through the other side, do a little sanding on it. And when you're finished and you got yourself a cigar float, that's what I'm talking about. Fishing hack number five. So most people know what these are, especially you bass fishermen. <laughs> these are little lead heads mounted to nails and you can stick them in your lures and basically add more weight to your lure if you need to. And the cool part is if you need more weight in the back, you could stick it in here. And if you need more weight in the front, you could stick it in this way. Oh, and by the way, something else, they make different versions of these weights too. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Now these lead weights, they ain't that cheap. I've had these a long time and I'm sure they done doubled in price since then. But what you could do is get you some nails. I got some masonry nails because they're thicker and they're gonna add more weight. Cause look at that thing, it's fat. But you could take one of these masonry nails and stick it in your lure and accomplish the same exact thing. Look at that. It's pretty awesome. But anyway, let's see what the weight difference is in these two. All right, so we're going to see how much this one with the lead on it weighs. It's 0 .05. And now we're going to see how much the nail weighs. It's also 0 .05 ounces. So they weigh the exact same amount. Fishing hack number six. You know, nowadays, GoPros and cell phones are both waterproof. And I personally have ruined a couple of phones when they weren't waterproof. But nowadays, most all phones and all GoPros are waterproof, which is cool. But if you drop one of these things out of your boat, it's gone because they don't float. And on this hack, I'm going to show you how to make a tether for both of these. So if you drop them out of the boat, you won't lose them. Now you can get flotation devices for GoPros, but they're big and they're bulky. Now for the GoPro, all we're gonna need is some of these little electrical connectors. You know what they are. These here are quarter inch stud rings. And then I got some braided rope here. I got it because it was tiny. Preferably, if you can, get the little stud rings that don't have the little plastic guard over it because I'm just gonna pull this one off of here in order to do this hack. Just like that. Now next, there's a little split in it and I'm gonna open that split up just a little bit. So you're basically going from this to this when you're finished. When you get to this part, then you need your rope. Now my wife's got a YouTube channel and it's called Today's Crafts. She did this magic trick on one of her videos where she took a ball that looked like this and she turned it into this. And that's pretty dang cool. She just waved her hand across it and whoop. You see that? It's like whoop. I think I can do that. I'm gonna turn this into this. Here it goes. Whoop. 
Dang it. So if y'all like making stuff, you might want to go over and check her out. But I will warn you, she talks kind of funny. She ain't all proper like me. I'm just saying. Now I'm going to take the rope and I'm going to hold it with pliers. I'm going to heat the end and mushroom it out on my table. All you need is a cigarette lighter. Just keep heating the end up, mashing it against the table until you get it mushroomed out or make a little hard place on the end. Now that we melted the end of this thing, it's hard and it won't even come back out. And once we clamp it shut, it'll never come back out. And now it looks like this. Now next, cut off the amount that you need and take a small piece of heat shrink tubing and slide down it. That part's not really necessary, but it cleans it up nice. Take a heat gun or a lighter and shrink the tube. And when you're done, you're pretty much finished with it. And you can attach it to something like this where you can just clamp it onto anything. Or you can just tie it to stuff. But this right here is going to save your GoPro if something happens. Now next, you take this bolt that holds your GoPro onto your stand. You slide your new little tether onto it and put it back onto your camera. And when you're done, you got your GoPro tethered. That's pretty cool right there. And it don't really get in the way either. But now if you're out there fishing and something just happens to happen or go wrong, you see what I'm talking about? That's pretty cool. I don't care what you say. Now that right there is awesome. Fishing hack number seven. All right, for the phone tether, I picked up this sign. Now you don't have to use a sign. You could use like a plastic binder that one of your kids have or something. But the trick is it's gotta be really thin like paper, but you don't want to use paper because paper ain't gonna be strong enough. This is just a really thin piece of plastic. All right, the next thing we're gonna do, lay your phone on the plastic and cut it as wide as your phone is. Now, every phone has a camera and you don't wanna bring it up to your camera. So we're only putting it on the bottom portion. So we only need this thing about this long, but we're gonna leave a really long tab, the same width as the charger hole on your phone. After I got my little paper cut down to where it fit inside of my case, I run my rope through it and I put some heat shrink tube on it. All I did was mushroom the end because it's not gonna pull back through there. Plus the phone's not that heavy anyway. So just take your heat gun and shrink this thing down and it should be fine. But once you get your cord in there, all you have to do is stick your phone back in your case. And now if you drop your phone, you got it tethered and it ain't going nowhere. That's pretty dang cool right there. Well, there you have it. Fishing hacks that every fisherman can use. Hey guys, if you like DIYs and you ain't checked out my channel page, you might want to go over there and check her on out. Because I got a long list of DIYs that'll help save you some money. And if you see something you like, click subscribe and click the bell so that YouTube will notify you when I post videos and you can watch them. And as always, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you on the next bill. Whoop. 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 I did it.